Previously, we talked about where to hold the cue. What I want to talk about now is what I deem to be the nitty gritty of the game, and that is how to hold the cue. Please take it from me that where and how you hold the cue is paramount to your progress in this game. Now, the method I'm going to be teaching you is used by most of the top players today. Not all, but certainly most. Now, if we look at the whole picture, the shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint. And that invariably will dictate where the elbow goes. The elbow is a hinge joint and it only works in one plane, whatever that plane is. The wrist joint is what is medically known as a condyloid joint. It's multifunctional for our purposes. Look at it, it's all over the place. It needs to work for us, it needs to work in harmony with the elbow joint, and it needs to be controlled. And the area that controls it, generally speaking, is this fleshy web of skin between the thumb knuckle and the forefinger knuckle. So if I hold the cue there, I wrap my forefinger around it and I concentrate on the front of the hand. The other fingers, and some coaches talk about release in those fingers, I don't like that word release. The reason being because it implies to me that we're letting go with those fingers. They're not touching the cue. They never let go. They never, ever lose contact with the cue. So I like to use the word, they unfurl and they refurl. And we'll go into that a little bit deeper in a moment's time. So till coming back to this area here, we hold the cue with the forefinger and that is the main essence of the grip. Now we put the other fingers on and if I just pull this cue towards me here and allow these fingers to unfurl, all right, and that is the hand in the backswing. We then close the grip and finish the swing off. Now the reasoning behind it is if I hold the cue with a full grip and I take it back, what tends to happen is that the cue will rock or seesaw. We need to keep it on a parallel plane. And if we had a full grip, keeping it on a parallel plane, we would have to use these major muscles to drop. And once we start using these major muscles, all manner of errors start to creep in. So if we hold it with the front of the hand on that first finger, from there as we go back, the fingers unfurl, that keeps the cue parallel with the table, and then they refurl and the shot has been played. Let's summarise the points of the grip that we've covered so far. Firstly, it's where to hold the cue, and now it allows us to have the sufficient amount of follow through. And secondly, how to hold the cue, allowing us A, to keep the cue parallel, and B, to deliver it on a in a straight line. Now, we don't need a snooker table or indeed snooker balls to practise that. All we need is something similar height to a snooker table, get down in the normal position and practice delivering that cue in a straight line. Let's see some of those, those points in action as we pot a few balls. 